step number three is building project calendars. Now, before we build the calendar, we want to uh, define what a calendar day is and a duration day. A calendar day is every day of the week, uh, Sunday through Sunday, right? So every day of the week would be a calendar day. A duration day is better known as a work day. Those are days that we're going to actually be on the job working, performing work. So um, the question becomes, well, how do we differentiate between a calendar day and a duration day within the Primavera software? Um, and uh, I'm going to kind of walk you through that and give you an idea of, of how to do that. First, we have to establish that there's four different types of calendars, okay? We have a five-day calendar with holidays. We have a five-day calendar with holidays and weather, with weather days. We have a seven-day calendar, and then we have what, what I refer to as an asphalt calendar, right, or an availability calendar. Um, those four different calendars we have to uh, create within the software uh, to allow us to assign it to individual tasks. Um, so before we start a schedule, as you can see right there, we haven't even started a schedule yet. We just created it. Um, we're going to go ahead and set the default calendars. And this will prevent any rework later of changing the, the uh, calendars later on. Um, uh, although there will be some necessary rework, it will prevent us having to uh, rework all the calendars within every task. It's important to remember that a, a calendar is based on uh, a 40-hour work week. So... Um, you know, uh, a a calendar day versus a duration day, right? Or a calendar week versus a duration week is a calendar week is 12, you know, 24 hours a day or, you know, 12 hours a day or eight hours a day for seven days. A duration day is um, 40 hours a week, eight hours a day for five days. So uh, when we deal with like uh, weather or different items like that, we have specs that can, can, tell us that information so let's go ahead and go in and create a calendar okay um, so we want to create different calendars for every individual task right um, so you know to begin with uh, we want to you know we have our schedule open um, we're gonna go in here we're gonna go ahead and say all right we want to uh, uh, create a individual calendar for every um, every uh, individual task. So we go to enterprise, go to calendar, and you can see we can have project-based calendars and global calendars. The difference is, is that if I have a global calendar and I transfer it to somebody else, it will automatically populate their database of information. Um, and we don't like doing that because we don't want to mess with other people's software. We want to make every, every calendar project-based. That means the project contains the calendar, but it's not going to go into their global calendar settings. Okay, So it prevents you from modifying the receiver's settings. So we're going to make sure we clicked on project. We're going to hit add. And this dialog box comes up. Okay. And you can see I already have different calendars there. We're just going to go ahead and assign one. We're going to go ahead and uh, 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 select, you know, a five-day calendars with holidays. Okay. Um, and we'll just name it five-day with holidays. Okay. Um, you should have some standard calendars, you know, uh, in in the software automatically so that's why I kind of teach this way is because there's already some calendars in there so then we're gonna go ahead and modify the calendar and you can see that dialog box comes up and you can see it's five days with holidays um, you can see the shaded blocks you know on the weekends obviously are non work days any exceptions are white and standard work days are uh, are gray so we know that we're not going to say work December, you know, th uh, 25th, right? So it's going to make it, we're going to mark it as a non-work day. Uh, we'll say, okay, you know what, the 24th, we're not going to work on Christmas Eve. We'll make that a non-work day. And we'll also make the 31st a non-work day. So by looking at that, you can already say, okay, I can see what days I am working, what days I'm not working. You know, we can go to January and do the same thing, non-work days, right? So uh, we can modify uh, the work weeks. You know, you see we have eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. We can modify that if we're working a different schedule. Um, time periods, you know, we can go in there and look, you know, once eight hours a day, how many hours a week, you know, uh, how many hours a month and how many hours a year. 
So we're not, we don't normally get into these work week settings unless we have something odd, like we're working 12 hours a day or something like that. But it's pretty standard that we plan based on an eight hour work day. Um, you got to also keep in mind that there's a difference between availability and uh, you know, actual work on the job site. You know, they say that only 67% of your actual uh, work uh, time you go to work is actually productive. So that's pretty scary. So basically, a, th you know, a quarter of your time, more than a quarter of your time, almost a third of your time is uh, dedicated to stuff that's non-productive. So a lot of times people keep it at an eight-hour work work day, even though we may work 10. And, you know, 10 hours is very typical for construction. 10 hours a day, five days a week. Okay, so we went ahead and we identified, we set all the weekends, and we set the holidays. And this is a five-day with holidays. And we do that for every month uh, for the project. And what I normally do is I, you know, if the project goes to 2020, uh, January 2020, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and put calendars all the way to say June 2020 because we know how construction happens it gets delayed and it's nice that we already have that in the software uh, to begin with in case it is delayed so we go ahead and hit uh, okay and now we have uh, the calendar in let's go ahead and do uh, the same thing again um, we'll go ahead and hit add and instead of we'll do it we'll do a, a five day uh, uh, you know, just a straight up uh, five day holiday with weather. So we'll go five day with holiday and weather. Okay. So now that we have that, even though I spelled it wrong, um, now we're going to go in there. We're going to modify it again. Same settings that we had before. We can look at work weeks to make sure we still got a, a 40 hour work week. Um, you see, in this case here, we identified the holidays, okay, uh, as non work days. And we'll go ahead and put some other non work days we did on the last one. But you notice in the calendar, um, um, in the calendar, you know, we had these two days identified, okay? Um, so for weather days, weather days is simply defined as one inch of precipitation over a four hour period. So that means if it rains over a four hour period and it gives, and it's one inch of rain, that would be considered a weather day. However, if you're doing nothing but site work, you probably want to double that. Uh, in absence of a specification that details out to you how many weather days you're allotted every single month because a lot of times with uh, large projects or government projects, they will identify, they've already done their work for you. They're, they'll go to NOAA and they'll already identify how many days typically occurs um, you know, uh, per month. In this case, you know, we'd go to the specifications. We say, okay, the, you know, the specs say, or we've looked it up and we estimate that we're going to have in December, uh, we're going to go ahead and have three, uh, uh, you know, weather days in addition to the holidays. So we'll mark those as work. I normally do Fridays. There's no, no rhyme or reason as long as it's consistent. Uh, if I had five days, what I do is I go, and I've used all Fridays up, I'll go to the to Thursdays, you know. As long as there is a consistent approach to the way you assign uh, weather days to a calendar, that's fine. As long as you have the availability days taken out of the schedule. Uh, we want to account for weather, and that's how we account for weather. So, uh, so Fridays and Thursdays. So we just make sure if we had five days, we, get, we mark every Friday and a Thursday as non-work. And we do that for every individual month, you know, obviously, you know, we see we've already done that for, you know, one, two and three work days, right? Um, our calendar days, I can see that because I know what the holidays are, Martin Luther King Day and New Year's Day, right? So that pretty much covers the five day calendar. Um, now we have uh, the uh, seven day calendar and a seven day calendar is pretty straightforward. Um, we want to make sure we work. Uh, if it's seven days, not necessarily meant um, for work necessarily. It's more meant for submittals and anything that has to be tracked by calendar days. A lot of people say this instead of a seven day calendar, they'll call it calendar day calendar. And you can see every work day, every day is a work day. So straightforward. We want to check that eight hours a day for seven days, okay, instead of five days. So, um, 
we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, close that. Now we got the seven day calendar. And the last one that we want to add is what I refer to as an asphalt calendar but it's really an availability calendar okay and so we'll go ahead and say we'll take the five-day calendar right uh with with holidays and weather we'll take that we'll bring it in and we'll name this um an asphalt calendar and it could you know it could be numerous different things um you could call it an availability calendar um but i think of asphalt and the reason i think of asphalt is because there are periods of time when you uh you know deal with asphalt that you can't the asphalt plants close down so there's nothing you can do there are different scopes of work that that occurs with asphalt being the one that is you know typical so what we'll do is we'll say okay we know from say November 15th until March we have uh, that we cannot uh, lay asphalt. So what we'll do is we'll mark and notice I hold down I held down the shift key I hold 15 the 15th and I held the shift key selected to the 30th and I marked all non-work days. We select the entire month of December as non-work days and we'll do the same thing for January, right, and February. And then say the plant opens on the 15th. So we'll only go to the 15th. Okay. So we take a five day with holidays and weather. We, you know, take out the, the you know, the periods of time that we know the asphalt plant is going to be closed down. And then we have a calendar we can assign. And this will help prevent uh, when you actually do the schedule uh, to, you know, to be showing that you can asphalt in January, you know, in North Dakota. It'll prevent those type of things happening. So. So now that we have all the individual calendars, um, uh, you know, we can, we have all the four different calendars. We can go ahead and close this. And now we have a database of calendars we can select from. So in the future, when we um, will assign an, an activity calendar to a task, which is in step nine, we'll go ahead and click on in the detail portion here. We'll click on the activity calendar and then we're able to it'll pull up a dialog box and it'll allow us to assign an individual calendar to every individual task. So we can also assign a calendar to a subcontractor. Uh, we could have subcontractor specific calendars. Say a subcontractor only is going to work four days a week, but you know, 10 hours a day, we can do that. Uh, if we have a six day work week, we can do that. So we can establish calendars for every different scenario that we have. So that pretty much covers step number three, building a project calendar.